the movie opens up with an introductory screen that mentions the Europa mission as the first attempt to send both male and female astronauts into deep space. A group of six astronauts undertake a mission funded by a private organization to explore Jupiter's moon Europa in search of potential signs of life. The team includes Commander William Shu, pilot Rosa Dask, Chief Science Officer Daniel Luxemburg, Marine Biology Science Officer Katya Petronva, Junior Engineer James Corrigan, and Chief Engineer Andre Block. Following this, various clips show the crew of astronauts embarking on their space journey. As the scene progresses, the camera feeds begin to distort and eventually cut out, with the last image being from Pilot Rose's cockpit before turning to static. On Earth, the CEO of Europa Venture, Dr. Samantha Unger, is participating in an interview. She explains the mission's scenarios, highlighting that the spacecraft has surpassed all previous records for human travel distance. She further describes that while she was on a transatlantic flight, she received the news from the mission control that they had lost communication with the Europa One crew. Initially, they thought it might be a transmission delay, but it had already exceeded 15 hours of no signal. Inside the spacecraft, the crew assembles in the central living area, clearly disturbed by James's absence. A recorded video confirms James's tragic death, leaving the entire crew in a state of distress and emotional breakdown. Katya expresses concerns about notifying James's family and discusses whether they should proceed with the mission. The scene then shifts to 19 months prior to the current events, marking the beginning of the mission. Europa Venture organizes a press conference to announce the launch of Europa 1 into space. Scientists confirm the existence of subsurface lakes on Europa, and the crew emphasizes the connection between liquid and the potential for life. Additionally, NASA detects heat indicators in the Konamara Chaos Area. The entire team appears to be thrilled about the significant mission. The spacecraft is launched successfully, and the crew receives enthusiastic applause from mission control as they pass beyond the moon's orbit. While on board, James records a video providing an overview of the ship's interior and showcasing the tools they have on hand. He also discusses the effects of weightlessness in space and captures the excitement of the rest of the crew. The scene then cuts to the 21st month of the mission, and the crew is more than 500 million miles away from Earth. In contrast to the initial enthusiasm, a gloomy atmosphere has descended among the crew. William and Daniel are seen talking about Andre's recovery, suggesting that he hasn't been doing well lately, probably due to James's death. As a result of this, they decide to bring him to the Europa's surface, rather than leaving him alone in the orbiter. At this point in time, the spacecraft is already in orbit around Jupiter. Seeing their destination so close boosts the crew's morale to complete the mission. As they approach Europa's orbit, they split up from the main spacecraft and proceed to land on the icy surface. However, they encounter radiation interference near their planned landing site. Due to this, they opt for an alternate spot, which is about 100 meters away from the Konamara Chaos, which was their preferred site. Now, instead, they have to land in the Dingli Doppleo Dumbas. Back on Earth, Dr. Unger gazes at Jupiter in the sky, holding on to hope that the crew has successfully reached the surface, as she is unable to communicate with them. After taking a few days to settle down at Europa's surface, the crew members begin discussing their strategy for collecting samples and searching for signs of life. Daniel points out the challenge of obtaining the desired samples, since they did not land where they were supposed to. In response, Katya suggests that they investigate under the ice, since there is nothing else they can do. Heeding her advice, they start drilling through the thick icy surface using a robotic arm, and then deploy a remote underwater probe. It appears that acquiring the necessary data won't be so easy. In the midst of breaking through the ice, their spacecraft experiences a couple of abrupt vibrations. Daniel attributes these to ice movements and assures everyone that all is well. As a result, they continue with the drilling process, anticipating more shakes as the temperature drops. During the nighttime, the spacecraft undergoes another shaking episode. While the rest of the crew tries to identify the cause, Andre spots a flickering light outside the ship. He quickly grabs a camera to capture it, but unfortunately misses it. Following this, he rushes to his friends and recounts his sighting of LED-like lights with a refraction about a hundred meters from the ship. The team then checks various camera feeds, but doesn't find visual evidence. However, when they examine the heat signature data, they find out that the footage of Andre was glitching due to radiation interference. Coincidentally, the footage glitches at the exact same time when Andre started to see the mysterious light. This makes Daniel believe that Andre might have hallucinated the light and dismisses his concern. Later that night, Andre is unable to sleep because of the mysterious event. Hence, he vows to uncover the truth behind it. Boodle-doo-doo, -doo. Tom DeLong is calling. After hours of drilling, the 
machine finally pierces the ice, unveiling the first glimpse beneath Europa's surface. The entire crew, especially Katya, is awestruck and overwhelmed by this pristine and unexplored vista. Katya, being the marine biologist, estimates the ocean's depth to be approximately 100 kilometers. They set their course for the target zone, only to notice some unexpected thermal activities in the vicinity. While letting the robot collect samples, they hear strange noises and suspect them to be reverberations. The thick ice layer above protects anything from radiation, but even then, they detect a radiation spike. This makes Katya realize that it's actually coming from below, deeper into the target zone. The team then prepares to readjust course, but as the radiation spike persists, they see a flicker of light and then something hits the probe lens, causing it to be smashed. They lose control of the probe just as they get ready to extend its arm. Now, the only way to collect sufficient samples is a surface walk of 100 meters to the target zone. Frustrated, Katya tries to persuade her crew members to allow her to go outside and gather the samples. However, they refuse and begin to argue about the dangers posed by Jupiter's radiation. The movie then takes us back to the sixth month of the mission, when James was still alive. On their way to Europa, he is seen recording his daily activities for his family. At one point, the spaceship gets struck by a solar storm, exposing it to a wave of radiation that damages crucial components, including communication with Earth's control center. This explains why the image of Rosa in the cockpit was the last image received back on Earth. In order to inspect and fix the system, Andre and James don their spacesuits and set out. However, there's a problem. They must return quickly due to limited oxygen. Upon inspection, they realize that the communication panel has been fried, so they decide to open the circuit board. Unfortunately, during the operation, a piece of metal snaps and rips Andre's suit, causing him to lose oxygen. Seeing this, James rushes him to get to the airlock. Just as they are about to enter the airlock, James notices the hydrazine has splattered all over his suit due to the panel explosion. This chemical is so toxic that it can contaminate the ship's air, risking everyone's lives. The veteran Andre attempts to save James by taking him out of his suit, but he blacks out from a lack of oxygen. Knowing there is no hope for himself, James pushes Andre into the airlock while propelling himself away from the ship. In his haste, James forgets to secure himself to the hull. The ship drifts away, and James is left with only minutes of oxygen. William says that he can no longer be rescued, because by the time they get to him, James will be lost. All William can do is apologize. In his final moments, James thanks Andre for trying to save him, and tells William not to be sorry, as it was an accident. He then remembers his family, bids them goodbye, and slowly asphyxiates to death. Back in the present, the team debates the possibility of a surface walk. The crew votes, and Katya is ultimately allowed to go. Andre and Rosa help her put on the spacesuit, while Daniel and William decide to analyze data. Once on the surface, Katya is amazed to see the mesmerizing view of Europa. After some time, she sends back data from several samples. All are negative for life, but when she analyzes a subsurface specimen, she detects a unicellular organism like algae. This discovery brings great joy to the crew members' faces, as their hard work has paid off. Following this, William calls her back, but Katya spots a glowing area in the dark. Thinking that it might be the one Andre saw earlier, she proceeds to investigate using her reserve oxygen. Katya turns off her lights and walks closer to this one. In the meantime, Daniel finds out that the heat radiation levels are actually moving with the light. Sensing the imminent danger, the crew advises her to get back inside, but before she can react, the ice beneath Katya breaks through, causing her to slip through the track they can see that Katya is falling through the ice. When the crew checks her helmet camera, they see her terrified face gazing at a blue light before her connection is completely cut out. In the aftermath, the crew suspects that it's a complex organism that got triggered by Katya's light and attacked her. They then decide to head back to Earth to report their discovery. However, as they proceed to lift off, they face some troubles. Rosa and William struggle to stabilize the spacecraft due to engine malfunctions. The lander stalls, hurtling back to towards the surface. As a consequence, the ship starts to fall from a height of 2,000 meters. In a brave move, William leaves his seat and releases the water shield to slow down their descent. He manages to save the crew, but unfortunately dies due to the impact. This time, they land in the original landing zone, the place where they were initially supposed to. Andre does a damage assessment and explains that they're losing both heat and oxygen, as a result of which they'll soon freeze before they asphyxiate. Despite this, Rosa and Andre are determined to navigate 
navigate through the situation. As the crew works on figuring things out, the ice starts shifting, causing the spacecraft to shake violently. Andre then announces that it'll take two people to work outside for a couple of hours to fix the engines. Following this, Andre and Daniel suit up and venture outside to repair the partially frozen fuel tank, while Rosa stays inside, preparing the engines. She records a video and hopes that if they don't make it, the future explorers will find her recordings. She then connects the recorder to the communication panel. Meanwhile, as Daniel opens the airlock and takes his first step outside, his suit camera catches radiation interference. The ice suddenly shifts, causing the ship to shake again. Amidst this chaos, Daniel disappears. Andre reports to Rosa that Daniel was surrounded by lights, and the ice beneath him cracked before he vanished. After losing four crew members, Rosa and Andre are the only survivors. Realizing that the ship can't be repaired, he suggests an alternative, fixing the communication link to their mother's ship. This, however, requires salvaging parts from their life support so that they will be able to send their data to Earth. Rosa steadies herself to accept that they have to die, and proceeds as per his instructions. After a while, Andre somehow manages to reach the surface and starts transferring parts from the life support system to the communications panel. During this, a blue luminescence is seen, lurking behind him under the ice. The light moves closer to Andre, but he manages to finish the job. Knowing that her life is coming to an end, Rosa decides to open the airlock to uncover the life form that claimed the crew's lives. Before that, she points the camera behind her as the ship descends beneath the ice. Crouching in the pilot's seat, Rosa watches the ship filling with water. Lights are seen moving under the surface, attached to some sort of tentacle. The final image captures an enormous, octopus-like, bioluminescent creature approaching the camera. We'll be damned, it's the Kraken. In the end, Dr. Unger states that their mission, Europa 1, has come full circle. She explains how the crew sacrificed their lives for each other to keep the mission alive and to push the discovery further. The discovery of the creature goes beyond their wildest theoretical models, highlighting how our universe is stranger and more alive than ever imagined. The movie ends with a group picture of the whole team taken at the beginning of the mission, smiling and excited. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.